Don't you just hate it when you're outside trying to enjoy the wonderful scenery of Paldea, and then suddenly you're mobbed by an aggressive pack of Pokemon? Well, that's what this video is all about. It's hard to find statistics for an entire planet, but just in the US alone, over 47,000 people annually seek medical attention after being attacked by wildlife. And another 68,000 have sought medical attention for zoonotic diseases. These are diseases transferred to humans from animals. Now imagine how high that number would be if those animals could light themselves on fire or throw boulders at your house. So what would the most dangerous Pokemon in Paldea be? Let's find out. Beaches are a common destination for vacations or various recreational activities, and it appears that Paldean beaches are no different as evidenced by the various coastal towns and chairs and umbrellas that we can find in these habitats. However, would beachgoers be hesitant if there happened to be a two foot tall, 32 pound venomous predator stalking the shoreline? Our fifth most dangerous Pokemon in Paldea is Toxapex. <coughs> Toxapex is a poison water type that is mostly aquatic, but does venture up on the shoreline to search for food. Its Pokedex entry states that the poison it produces, which is really more of a venom since it's injected, is so toxic that Waylords suffer for three days after being envenomed. Now remember that Waylord is 47 feet long and weighs about 900 pounds. Imagine if your average human stumbled on top of a Toxapex while going for a swim. The pain would probably be unbearable and they better have some pakey berries in their bag. An estimated 150 million people are stung by jellyfish each year, which isn't a direct analog to Toxapex, so they're really closer to sea urchins, which can also sting you if stepped on. But imagine if those jellyfish were 30 pounds and hyper intelligent. Probably wouldn't turn out great. Number four on our list also occurs in water bodies in Paldea and really makes me think maybe we should just stay out of the ocean. It's Gyarados. Gyarados's large size means that it probably spends most of its time feeding in slightly deeper waters than are found right next to beaches, but it's certainly a familiar face to coastal waters. Oh, and it can also fly? So really, nowhere is safe from a Gyarados suddenly showing up. Many of its Pokedex entries talk about its aggressive nature, which is usually a bad sign to see associated with a 21 foot 500 pound sea monster. Some even state it's capable of raising entire cities by shooting laser beams out of its mouth. In the real world, it's ecologically similar to various modern day sharks, both being large, generally marine predators feeding on a wide variety of prey items. While you do have a much greater chance of drowning than getting bit by a shark, shark attacks do happen. During 2022, there was a total of 57 confirmed unprovoked shark attacks, with 41 of those being in the US. Lucky for us, sharks seem much more docile than Gyarados do, and I can only imagine the damage a shark could deal if it knew Hyper Beam. Moving away from the coast to the grasslands that cover much of Paldea, we have our third most dangerous Pokemon. Although don't be too surprised if one of these jet black amphibious attitude problem cows shows up while going for a swim, because our next Pokemon is Paldean Tauros. Weighing between a surprisingly low 187 pounds and 250 pounds, and only being 4 foot tall, Paldean Tauros is not here to mess around. This is a herd Pokemon that can travel large distances at incredible speeds, and isn't afraid to run you down even if you're riding on a giant red dragon. It's likely that Paldean Tauros has been largely domesticated due to its three different breeds found in game, but its wild or escaped counterparts are a common sight in the Paldean countryside. Tauros is similar to any number of real-life bovines, but I'm going to focus on the Cape Buffalo from Southern and East Africa. These large cow relatives have similar horns and coloration, but can weigh a staggering 1,900 pounds, which is basically four Paldean Tauros put together. They are an incredibly successful herbivore living in a variety of environments, which is probably why they're so dangerous since you find them everywhere, and healthy individuals are capable of fighting off most predators. Their bad attitudes have earned them nicknames such as the Black Death and the Widowmaker, and they fatally wound around 200 people every year. Now imagine if this organism was intentionally bred for combat, could light its horns on fire or shoot out high pressure jets of water, and you encourage children to pursue their friendship. You would end up with Paldean Tauros and probably a dwindling human population. Next up, I'm cheating a little bit for our number two most dangerous spot because I'm giving this spot to all of the various dog Pokemon found across Paldea. Paldea is home to a wide variety of wild dog-like Pokemon, as well as those that seem to have been a bit more domesticated over the years. We can find them in basically every habitat except for once the ocean is spared from their presence, 
and many of them form packs or have close relationships with humans. Which makes this group of Pokemon so dangerous. I mean, look at this thing, it's adorable, I mean terrifying. More than 4.5 million people are bitten by dogs each year in the US alone, and of those more than 800,000 receive medical attention. These are animals, and likely Pokemon, that have evolved to defend themselves and take down prey using basically only their teeth, so it's no surprise that a bite from these organisms could deal quite a bit of damage. And if you're spending every day around dogs, or dog-like Pokemon, the chance of having a negative interaction with them only increases. Now, getting nipped at by a Chihuahua might not be quite as damaging as getting fire by a 300 pound Arcanine, but there's another reason that dog bites can be so threatening. The risk of rabies. Rabies is a viral disease that causes encephalitis or inflammation of the brain in humans and is transmitted from infected individuals to other through saliva. Globally, dogs are the most common animal infected and in most countries where this is the case, the vast majority of rabies cases are the result of dog bites. However, rabies vaccines for your dog are effective, which is why in the US only 5% of cases are from dogs. If humans are infected, the symptoms usually progress to delirium and later a coma. Death then occurs 2-10 to 10 days after the first symptoms arise, and if you experience these symptoms, your chance of survival is basically zero. We don't know if rabies exists in the Pokemon universe, but we do know that viruses exist thanks to Pokerus. Pokerus is otherwise known as the Pokemon Virus and can be transmitted to other Pokemon in a player's party after a battle. Pokerus is mostly a game mechanic and is actually beneficial since it doubles the effort values gained from battling and is useful for forming competitive teams. But it makes you wonder what other viruses could exist in the Pokemon universe and if any of those will swell your brain and make you kick the bucket after getting bit by a suspicious mastiff. And now our most dangerous Pokemon found in Paldea represents a group of organisms that causes between 81,000 and 137,000 deaths annually and almost three times as many amputations and permanent disabilities. And that Pokemon is Seviper as a stand-in for venomous snakes. So Viper is a poison type snake like Pokemon with incredibly large fangs and a venomous tail blade. It bears resemblance to modern day Vipers and Elapid snakes, which are responsible for upwards of 2.7 million envenomations each year. Most snake bites occur in tropical and subtropical countries, places where snake diversity is at its highest, and many of these countries have weak healthcare systems or few medical resources, which further exacerbates the problem. So Viper being over 8 foot long and over 100 pounds is many times larger than most of the snakes causing these envenomations, such as the Russell's Viper, which maxes out at around 5 foot long and a fraction of the weight. This could actually cause the Viper to be less dangerous as it is more apparent in its environment. Many envenomations happen because the snake is not seen. With the Viper's large size, bright coloration, and unique behavior of orienting its body vertically, it's possible that this Pokemon relies on intimidation tactics and aposematism in order to avoid predation instead of camouflage like many other snakes. However, if antagonized, Viper can still pose a huge threat to humans through the use of Poison Tail and Poison Fang, or even Sludge Bomb if Viper prefers to keep its distance. In real life, anti-venoms are the best treatment for any of these envenomations around the globe, but in the Pokemon universe, luckily we have mass-produced poison heals and naturally occurring berries. From my perspective, there are the top 5 most dangerous Pokemon in the Paldea region. But what makes some of these Pokemon so dangerous is that humans are likely to interact with them, leading to more negative interactions. But there's some Pokemon in this region that are just as scary, but you're less likely to come across them, so let's take a look at those Pokemon with our honorable mentions. Our first honorable mention, and one that I'm sure many of you were expecting to see on this list, is the Dragon Ground Pokemon Garchomp. I'll admit that Garchomp certainly looks more intimidating than many of our other most dangerous Pokemon. And this thing has everything it needs to be an apex predator, including good stats, a plethora of weapons, and the teeth of a carnivore, but luckily Garchomp is mostly restricted to cave systems, arid regions, or mountain ranges all places that are usually sparsely populated. Garchomp is seemingly a combination of a shark and a large reptile, both of which can be dangerous to humans, but if you learn to avoid their home ranges, I think Garchomp populations are low enough that most people would never see one. Our next honorable mention is restricted to the deep sands of the Asado Desert and other similar habitats, and that is the heavyweight Pokemon Hippowdon. 
Not only could this thing crush a Rotom bike with just its mouth, it could whip up a sandstorm while doing so. Hippowdon obviously draws some inspiration from real-life hippopotamus, which may be responsible for around 500 fatalities each year. While Hippowdon might be more dangerous than real-life hippopotamus because of moves like fissure or earthquake, they fortunately live in low population areas and humans that aren't trainers or adventurers are unlikely to cross their path. I mean, when was the last time you were stranded in a desert? And our final honorable mention would normally live in regions that humans deem somewhat uninhabitable, but a blossoming skiing community is likely to increase the amount of human Pokemon interactions with our final Pokemon that locals refer to as the Snow White Demon, and that is Beartick. Beartick is an ice type Pokemon that resembles modern day polar bears, and is found on Glaciato Mountain. In real life, polar bear attacks on humans are extremely rare, but that is because we typically don't build cities and ski resorts in the middle of their habitats. Polar bears prefer the extreme North Arctic regions of the globe and commonly hunt on ice flows for seals. Whereas bear tick appears to be less picky on its prey and habitat preferences, as it can be found in multiple regions and mountain ranges. More data is needed on how bear tick is influencing the communities on Glaciator Mountain, but beware of this apex predator while it hunts for Pokemon like Snover and Citadel. Hopefully looking at Pokemon through the lens of real life statistics and biology was a fun thought experiment, and let me know what other Pokemon you think deserve to be on the list of Paldea's top 5 most dangerous. Feel free to check out my other videos on Pokemon Ecology, and thanks for watching.